Hey everybody, Larry Lawn here. Got a good video for you today. We have Castle Vega, an art thief whose story is really amazing, and he's a street guy, and that's why I wanted to do this video for you guys to check it out. Before I get started, check us out on all major platforms: YouTube, uh, Discord, uh, Patreon. Check out the merch, Gangster Redemption, doing great all over the place. Of course, the Crooked Diamond Cigar, it is great. I love them, people love them, and that's CrookedDiamondCigar.com, CrookedDiamondCigar.com. Everything's in the link below, including this interview with Picasso. Picasso, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Larry. I appreciate it. You know, uh, you're, I got to meet you, uh, we did a whole podcast and people can go check this whole uh, video on the podcast as well. But this is going to be really interesting. We're going to get uh, into your story a little bit and a couple of questions here. What was your first time crime and how did you get that itch? The first crime I've ever committed was probably a theft. And it was a, uh, a monetary theft. It was a uh, theft from uh, someone's home. It was they had cash in the safe, and I took the cash out of the safe. You know, when I was a young kid, I think our first time crimes were mine was uh, uh, with the mob. But I mean, even before that, we used to boost stuff from from bodegas and, and and little stuff. Did you do that? No, I didn't do any of that. I won't even shoplift. I don't shoplift at all. Wow. So you're a real criminal. I mean, like a specific criminal. As a matter of fact, the other day someone said to me, do you go to Home Depot and shoplift? And I said, that just sounds insane. Why would somebody go to Home Depot to shoplift? If you get caught, you get caught for, buy, for shoplift as a piece of crap. What's the point of that? That's like no mentality there. My, my point too, if you had to rob like I did, rob a million. The fist You take the register. Right, but you know... You, you, what I did read about you and stuff is you're, you're a street hustler. Uh, you're a guy who comes from my neighborhood, actually, come from Brooklyn. And uh, you, actually, you actually lived right near where my mom was a nurse, uh, my mom in his hospital. So I understand your mentality and how we grew up. Was there a trigger in your life that made you want to be a criminal instead of being just like a, I don't know, you're intelligent. So you could have been a soft worker. What made you be a criminal? I went to school for accounting. I actually went to uh, junior high school, high school, college, and business school for accounting. And um, the accounting did not fulfill me on a day to day basis. It was more of a uh, sitting there working with numbers, and I needed to, I needed to feel life. And sometimes, you know, life gets so stale, and that's what led me to uh, to steal. It was for the thrill. So now, now uh, obviously, uh, you, you did Jose Vega, you go by Picasso. Uh, so, hey, Picasso is because you were on the art. Uh, what made you decide to steal art? I have a true passion for artwork. Artwork is more than most people see. It's more of a feeling and emotion. Um, and the reason why they do call me Picasso is the Daily News named me Picasso. Uh, very early on, they put my face on the front cover of the of the Daily News, and they put the uh, Picasso over my head. For that, they, they, that's that's the help of name, Picasso. Okay, who are your targets? Like, uh, obviously, was it galleries or who are your targets? These were all private owners. These were not uh, galleries. And obviously, these took uh, painting from a gallery. On a daily basis, that painting would be scrutinized, but because it's a private owner, the only person who scrutinizes the painting is the owner. Ah, so you actually went, it, it wasn't home invasions. How did you find uh, these targets? I mean, how would you get to a target like that? Uh, I had a nine to five, a nine to five job that was uh, on the upper end of the echelon for the 1% of painting. It was the high end of uh, painting in a way that not everybody can do. You know, uh, wood grainy, marbleizing, Venetian plaster, any fancy finish that you can imagine, that's what we do. Wow, I mean, so, they, they, so it was almost like an opportunity crime? Yes. Wow. Okay, how long until you started thinking about taking the art? Like you went into these houses, was it immediate or how, why, why would you do it? 
When you walk into a multi million dollar mansion and you see three or four hundred pieces of artwork everywhere stacked and racked no one's ever gonna miss a couple out of it and those stacks of racks and they never have so i'm left it pretty good well at the you know you're a street guy you know you, you grew up in brooklyn so you, you know you you know the way of the streets you steal from people who probably never knew they were stolen is that true absolutely so there's, there's guys out there that top 1% ah, they were misplaced to point bait, right? Give it. That's exactly what they could say. It could still be in the basement somewhere. Wow. Okay. How many pieces of art did you steal? Total. I mean, you were going for how many years and how many pieces? It was more than Tracy. More than 50 pieces of art. And it. what was your time frame of your career? 25 years. Wow, so you steal an art for 25 years, and you amassed whatever, and again, that's why they call you Picasso. How long were you stealing painting? I mean, you said 20, 25 years. Do you still have that itch? Oh, uh, the other day I went into this uh, museum, and they have this Rembrandt. It's a portrait of a young lady, and I could tell you, that my mind has already stolen that painting ten times over. So fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, let's tell you, the bunny, you know, I, I, uh, my assistant Nick thinks I'm going to relapse. Every time I go by a jewelry store, I say, hey, look at that, it's a jewelry store. Uh, I'm not going to do it, and I don't think you are either. I think we're smarter than that. Now we have families, yet. we have the things we run. Uh, you know, you didn't get caught for so long. What do you attribute that to? Like, uh, obviously you're smart, but was it... Uh, the planning, the the people you robbed, uh, like you said, might not have known, but I'm sure some know, and they still never got it. You see, the thing is, with any crime, is you have to analyze every factor of the crime, from the pop probability that you get away with it to the, the fact that you possibly couldn't get caught for it. And anytime I went into a situation... I analyzed every factor so that way I had a way out, no matter which way I went. And that's what made me good. I, I went from just taking them to replacing them. So now there's nothing to lose. Wow, that, you know, obviously that's smart. You know what I, what I picked up on this crime as well is it's a nonviolent crime. You didn't, you didn't use a, uh, a firearm at any time. Also, it's really not robbing from an occupied dwelling because the at the time, the, the, the residence wasn't occupied. Because normally if you go into a home, a home invasion, that's a different level of the crime than it, what you did. You were a company working in a place, so they get you for, is it theft or stealing? Is that the level of the crime? What was the actual charge? The actual charges were grand, loss, grand larceny, wire fraud, uh, identity theft. Uh, I think it was total like 21 charges. How did money, money laundering? Yeah, they, they get a dog, but yeah, you check that one off. Okay, how and when did you get caught? Uh, on the very last job, on my very, very last job, I uh, slipped up, and on that morning, I went in high, which dulled all my senses, and that was my fault, and uh, the whole mansion was covered in video cameras inside the uh heat events so they set you up yes they did what led to the the government or the the, the police you know, setting you up or getting you to get cool what led to that the police were looking for the person that stole a, a painting a uh jean de Buffet painting on a prior occasion so they were fishing and they decided to set up video surveillance in the estate, in the mansion, inside all the vents and inside all of these little inconspicuous areas so they can catch, well, so they can try to catch me. If you didn't take the painting at that point, or any paintings that day, you just did the work that day, what do you think would have happened? They had nothing. They had absolutely nothing. They'll tell you that too. If you look at the Brooklyn D reality show, I believe it's episode three, in episode three, they'll tell you, if he doesn't take the paintings, we have nothing. So I'm not good.
You're not that good. You got caught. <laughs> God, I want to hide. It's the- I feel you. Listen, I got caught by good police way. I can tell there was one incident. But no, I, I I see it. I get it. You were good at what you did. Totally. You couldn't have done it for that many years without uh, uh, getting caught. Us criminals. I remember turning down a, a robbery that I did. Uh, it was a big robbery, $12 million. And I was literally in the bushes. We were going to take a, a manager hostage. And we were going to take him, put dynamite on him, get this about $12 million. And we didn't do it. It was right at the end because I had a hunch. Something wasn't right. And Amis is a criminal. Intuition is very important. Did you have the intuition that something was up? The wrench slags were everywhere. They were everywhere. It was just because I was high. I did not refer. I refused to see the red flags. Even there was a, there was a, uh, a doorway that was the lot to the other side of the hallway. So if you, why would they lock the door and it leads to another hallway? See, this whole caper was already mapped out. I already had pictures for it. This was already a done deal. It was just about executing it at this point. Ah, and you know. Well, so far, the theme of this video has got to be don't rob when you hide, but an honest. That's she learned what it should be, right? Heck, with the rob it all. You know, there's an interesting story I heard that the DA offered you Chinese food. Can you give me a little insight to that? That's a good one. Before I found out that there was a reality show called the Brooklyn DA, uh, the DA had me brought over to the Brooklyn courthouse to his office. And when I got to the office, I hadn't eaten in a little over, I think it was two weeks. So my stomach was killing me. You could hear my stomach from across the room. When I get to this office, they had this huge stuns of anarchy table, massive table. It had to be 12 feet long by four feet. And it was covered in Chinese food. There it was General Tao's chicken, boneless spare ribs. Getting me hungry. It was amazing. <laughs> and then the, the, the most incredible part was the DA says to me, he looks at me and he says, this is all for you. And I said, man, I'm not hungry at all. And he says to me, because he heard my stomach, he's standing 10 feet away. My stomach was screaming. He says, was that your stomach? I said, no, I'm full. All right. The problem here is I'm a street guy. I, I need my respect. And if you disrespect me, I'm going to go eat all that food and tell on myself that's not the way I function. Psychological games, they happen all the time with us street guys. It's what it is. It's actually, you know, no matter what, I might have robbed with a gun. But I had to be the street guy, the con, to get in there and do everything, find it where it is first. Uh, same kind of what you're talking about. And that's the, uh, you know, the game we play, the psychological game. Uh, did, the, did the cops take all of your pay? And you had 50 pay. That's called 50. Did the cops take 50 pay? The cops didn't take any pay. Elaborate. The pay tables were in a place that they could not access. Even though they were searching the house, they had absolutely no access to the paintings. Can you, can you elaborate? Where did you hide these paintings that they had no access? Were they in the house? The paintings were in the house. So you literally fooled investigators in a house. You had the paintings that they, they couldn't find them. Yes. That to me is that that to me is great. Now tell me where you hit them. They couldn't see them. I can't tell you exactly where I hit them because the room is still exists. It's still there, but it's built into the house. So unless you rip down the house, you can't find the room. Wow. And uh, okay, obviously after they did not find the painting, they were ceremoniously moved at least uh, to another. Somebody moved them. Yeah. That, yeah. I got you. Forget about. It. The Yana Matters. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so you can't do it. Uh, you know, you, you're, you've you been in the news, you're on the news, you're on a show called Brooklyn DA. Two episodes, actually, episode one and episode three. Am I correct on that? Or Yeah. Can people find those episodes or where did they find it? Uh, you can find the Brooklyn DA on Pluto Network. You could also find it on Amazon and I believe on YouTube. 
course, you have a YouTube. This is where we are, YouTube. And what are the projects? Uh, you know, I know you have a lot going on. Uh, what are the projects? Is there a movie in the works? Is this in the works? What's going on? The Picasso of these is uh, is doing a private screening for Lord of Nell, Florida. And they are releasing this in hopes of sealing a deal for not only a reality show, but a book deal. Because this was just the cherry on top. You still might want the rest of the story. Um, they're going to get the rest of the story. Everybody, I did a almost two-hour interview with Jose Picasso Beta. And the interview goes really deep as two street guys sit down and ha hang out how things are done from the streets and our crimes and our lives. So you're going to have to check that out. That's on the Real Deal podcast. You can watch that on YouTube as well. Uh, and obviously, we could talk about a book because, uh, as you know, I have a book. And uh, there's a lot you got to know about that, Jose. And I, and I wish you well with that. Is there uh, anybody, you know, you have a wife. You have two beautiful daughters now. You have a, oh, no one. A girlfriend? Get the kids? Good for you. That's all you need. All I need. I don't need the wife for it. And they're talking about possibly reality show where I find the wife and my girls probably find. Do you want to find what? I think it's time to. I you know I've um I've put my girls in the forefront this whole time just to assure that they they're okay. And I think it's time, you know, that they help me find someone. I think I'm ready for love. Well, you know, I, I think that comes with you don't know it. I mean, that's my, my, my uh, view. And then I don't know, but I could tell you one thing, and I'm going to wish you well now. I have two beautiful grandchildren, uh, another one on the way, and my two kids I love. I love my life, and I, I'm so happy to see that you changed your life. You're working forward. You're doing good things. You, you got past something that's tough for our street guys to get past. We'll always have the street in us, but it's not acting on some of the things, you know, like stealing a Picasso or stealing a piece of art or me stealing jewelry. Uh, no, Nick, I am not going to relapse. And I don't think you're going to relapse either, Picasso. Uh, we got to wish you well. Very proud of you. Happy for everything you're doing. And thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. And look for me on Facebook, Picasso, born in Brooklyn. Thank you. You heard it right there. It's in the links below as well. Come on, everybody. This is what we do. People ask for these kind of interviews. This is why I do them. Check Picasso out in the link below. Check all of our stuff out. Please make good choices. We don't want you to go down the route we went because he did his time too. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe.